Okay, so my name is Raj Chandar. I'm a product manager at Wireless LAN Business Unit at Zebra. So I'm going to do a demo of uh, Zebra Insight and walk you through the interface. So what I have here is a live network uh, that's running on here. It's our, uh, uh, what we call the alpha net where we test and our access points. And then I also have a couple of uh, setups. These are simulated setups, so we'll, we'll talk about that as well. So one that has uh, 200 access points, and uh, and then I have one more that has uh, about 20,000 access points, and you know uh, about 200,000 clients connected to it. Okay. So this one is running here, the one that I'm going to mostly use to show the functionality that is running uh, inside our labs. And the other two are, you know, hosted on uh, on a cloud platform outside. Okay. So the end site can be, you know, if it is running on our NX platform, it can be launched uh, from those the our management interface as a, you know, with a single sign-on as an application on top. So it runs on the controller, or you know, if it is running it as a server. So you can log into that with the same set of credentials that you have on your uh, NX controller. So once you log on to the system, so the first screen that you land on is the monitor page, uh, which provides you a summary of um, you know where you are. So depending on um, you know uh, before I start on this, let me explain some of the uh, user interface constructs here. So what you see on the left side is the network hierarchy. So in this network, we have you know two sites. Uh, San Jose and Plus and 10, so that's the uh, demo network that we are using. And similarly, if you are looking at a larger setup, so you can have you know hundreds or thousands of uh, locations on the left now. Okay. And so you can move around, and if you go up, you know the information is aggregated. So as you go go down into a specific site, that it will switch to the monitor screen. So at any level. You can get uh, you 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 would have a summary, quick summary of you know how your network is. Um, so at the top, so you have number of ways to explore the system. So I'm on monitor. Uh, that's the default landing page for this, and you can also explore the system using a map view. So in that case, you know it shows typically if you are at a rolled up level, it uses a Google map and shows your sites, and the sites could be you know, color coded, and you have the ability to see you know, if the site is up and running, or if there are one or, one or more access points down in that site, so it has uh, color coding as well, or if the entire site is down, you would see it in red. Okay. And here, so you have quick links, you can directly jump to the floor map for that site, or you know you can go to the summary view which I was showing, so I'll, I'll do that. Or if the, or if to, if you you also get a quick uh, snapshot of the number of access points that are connected, as well as the number of uh, connected clients, you can launch the client monitor or the access point monitor right from here. Okay, so I'm going to take you back to the summary page on the monitor. So here, um, so you have. This strip here, we call this the key metric strip, that provides you a quick uh, status on you know where you are on your left nav, and so if you move around, so you, you know all, you would see all the stats get updated. Okay. And on the summary page, so you have your usage trend. And so typically we default to the 30 minute, uh, last 30 minutes, and you have the ability to, you know, uh, switch to a different view. You know, you can move around. And so below the, so you see the, the client count trend as well as the usage across all the access points. And then you get a quick uh, snapshot of, you know, your top access points on the network and uh, top wireless lines by usage and uh, how the device profile looks, and also uh, visibility into the applications that are being used, so your top 10 applications, and, uh, and then a list of all the applications that are running on that site. Right. So you get a quick visibility into it, and you also, you know, on the application view, you see the number of clients that are running on each of those applications, 
and you also look at you know you have the ability to see which is the top client you know that is running that application okay. let me go back to the map view if you are uh, let me switch to sign of the I can also launch the device monitor. There are two ways to explore that. Either you can do monitor and then choose the devices tab here, or you can simply launch it from the map view so that you, know, you can explore it in uh, either way. So here again, so you have a bunch of charts at the top. So the schematic strip, you know, in, depending on the left nav, you know, it gets automatically updated. And uh, so we also have, uh, we compute uh, out of quality index across the network, across the site, which is, you know, which shows, you know, how your 2.4 and how your five gigahertz are doing. And you can click on this and it switches to the, you know, uh, trend chart for the out of quality index. So below the charts, so you have the list of all the access points that are, and then the status of the access points and the type. And so this, these grids, wherever we are showing the grids are completely customizable. You can look at all the columns that are currently displayed. So you can, you know, uh, you can change the preferences on the columns that you would like. And you can also, for example, you know, move the columns around and change the order. Uh, you could do all of that. And you also have the ability to, you know, uh, download, export it to a CSV file. So this kind of acts like a, you know, quick way to generate a report if you are looking at, you know, get a list of access point or inventory list or any of that. Okay. And these columns are also sortable, so you can sort by, you know, any of these columns either by ascending or descending order. So that's about the access point summary. And then if you switch to the monitor clients view, so you get insight into all the clients that are connected. Uh, so here you can switch between uh, clients that are online as well as if you want to look at some of the clients that are disconnected and are offline, you can switch between those tabs. So you get visibility into every connect that ever connected onto the network. So at the and at any level, so you have links that are highlighted, you can drill down. So in this case, I, if I look at the client, I can drill down to a specific client and you would see to the access point to which it is connected. You can mouse over and get the details of the access point and get the complete list of you know, the client details on the left side. Any questions? Okay. And that is, uh, you can also, you know, start at the devices monitor, drill down to a specific access point, and so you would see the access point details and the access point that is that we are looking at highlighted on the floor map, and then how your wired and wireless interfaces are configured and the list of clients that are associated with that access point. You can also click here, drill down further, and get to the client details page. And so below that, you have list of all the lifecycle events for that access point, when it got adopted, or if it dropped out of a controller and reconnected, so all that are linked to that. Uh, so from here, another thing that you could do is, if you want to review, if you're debugging an issue, so you have the ability to, you know, look at the event logs, so that defaults to the access point that you're looking at, get the complete history of events for that access point. And so here, by default, all the event types are selected, um, so you can reset and uh, look at you know, specific type of events as well. Okay. 
So that's a lot of information that we collect um, of, you know, across all the controllers that are running and from the access points that are connected. So all the events are consolidated. So you have a you know, centralized event log browser that you can play around with. Let me switch to the map view for I can also launch the map view from my access point detail. I'm going to do that and switch to floor one on that. So here, so it shows you a floor map and shows all the access points on the on that particular site or on that particular out of domain. And so you have the ability to, you know, look at, you know, how the channels are. So you can turn on the channels and it gives you a quick insight into the channel distribution. You can also switch between 2.4 and 5 and look at, you know, how the, you know, the 5 gig network is. So you can look at that. What was the name of the other management platform that was, what was the, uh, you used to have a, there was another NMS platform that overlaid on top of Wing? Uh, ADSP. ADSP, okay. Yeah. And, and Air Defense. Air Defense. Yeah. Okay, Air Defense. And this, uh, this obviously replaced that. How long is? This is not going to entirely replace ADSP. So ADSP is also our, uh, the wireless uh, WIFS platform. Okay. So that works out of, you know, sensors that are deployed on the, on the network. Uh, so ADSP, besides providing the WIPs, it also provides a number of other, you know, service assurance functionality on that. Some of that would be migrated onto this platform. Yes. Okay. So yeah. you expect to maintain the air defense platform sort of separate? Or purely for wireless. Forensics yeah. and security is basically what air defense uh, is going to be. Impact, as I said, is going to be the location platform and Insight is the service assurance service platform. Assur yeah. Gotcha. Okay. So the one of the... Um, the or there is a management platform within the controller itself, sure. so you yeah. can manage all of that, you know, in a, in a given controller. So that is, you know, a flash-based interface. You know, so we are moving to HTML5. So what you're seeing here is HTML5. Yeah. Okay. Is any of the work that you're doing with this platform going to affect the functionality or the look of the ADSP platform? Um, so the ADSP platform would, you know, so we're going to pull out some of the service assurance functionalities like, you know, we have within ADSP, um, so we have uh, this module called AP test, where our, each of our access point can act as a client and, you know, connect to other access points and test it. So we have, you know, you can test the complete infrastructure where an access point mimics like a client, not only test the wireless side of it, but it can do end-to-end -end testing like from, you know, radius authentication to how it would connect. So, so those, that is one functionality that is available on ADSP. So that, that'll get migrated to this platform. And so we also have a spectrum manager that is part of ADSP. So we'll also be migrating that into uh, Zbind site. Uh, a quick word is uh, in the genesis of air defense was basically a security platform. Right. And as part of that security DNA, it was doing sensing. So the first few years after Motorola acquired air defense, we had used the same sensor technology that was built into every access point to build all these other features and functions that could be used in network assurance, could be used in, um, uh, say, for example, location-based services. But as, like, you know, we are, we are looking at Wing 5 and evolving Wing 5, uh, we also have, like, you know, a constant amount of sensors like in you know, access points, double up as sensors to do RF management, spectrum management, et cetera, right? Mm. Uh, Off-channel scan, uh, providing capacity controls, and it actually makes sense to aggregate all of the network assurance and management functionality on wing. That is the direction we are headed. Air defense will go back to its roots of extending, like, you know, forensics and security, gearing up for the world of what does security mean for Internet of Things? And uh, later on, we will we'll cover a little bit of the impact platform that is now going to be the new location-based services platform for us. So will that mean that um, 
the base APs that you have will still have the abilities to act as sensors as well for air defense, so be feeding data both to the inside and the air defense platform? Absolutely, you're right. So we will have the capability of providing, if someone is wants the advanced forensics capabilities that air defense provides, uh, we will be talking, the sensors will talk to air defense, mm -hmm. uh, but all the access points are going to have a, a socket open up to wing five and, and the inside platform. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so I think we're running on short on time, but I want to show you some highlights of this product, uh, walk you through the dashboard interface. So the monitor screens that I showed, uh, you know, these are pre-canned, right? So you have set of information, you have a few bunch of charts, and then you, you know, it provides real-time monitoring. Um, so you have, you know, so those are pre-canned set of screens. Um, so for this application, so we believe there are different roles within an organization that will use this. Could be your first level support or your IS manager that may be looking at different sets of you know information uh, out of the out of this platform, right? So we have the ability to build uh, your own dashboards. Unlike a static dashboard, these are you know live uh, and uh, self-updating. So based on that, that again based on you know where you are, right? So it's like act, kind of acts like a template. So I have a bunch of them that are pre-created here. So you have the ability to look at applications. And uh, for example, look at some of the RF metrics, like you know, you can quickly take a look at the top worst 10 APs by retries or you know, uh, by SNR, by channel utilization, and you know the clients uh, by retries. So I have some of them. So then you have uh, utilization in terms of top 10 APs by usage, and uh, you can also look at. Uh, Sorry, the client timeline. So this is pretty useful when you are looking at you know debugging a client, you know troubleshooting a client. Um, so you get complete history, roaming history of the client that's plotted on a time. So you get you know when it got us you know associated, when it dis, you know when it got disconnected. So even for an offline client, you know you'd be able to pull this uh, you know details of the client. And you can go back on time. So you have multiple knobs here for the dashboard. So you can switch between times, like the view. You can go to two-hour view or a one-day view or one month or three month. And then you can also move on the you know on the left side and uh, look at how it looks. Okay, that may not be relevant for something that is tight. I'll explain that quickly. So this button right here is the filter option. So where you have a dashboard where you can tie uh, a specific client or a specific device to it. Right, so let me quickly show. What is, on the yeah. right hand, I can't read any of the text. On the right hand side, what is it that we're looking at? What's that a graph of? It's the, this one? Yeah, that's a, On the right. Oh, that, that, the that's the uh, client distribution by RF protocol. Oh, interesting. Let me, let me build a new dashboard. Okay. So it's pretty straightforward. You just click on the plus button. So what it opens up is an empty canvas. And uh, on, the, on the right side, you have a bunch of themes. So it's just primarily placeholders, the grids, how you want to organize the dashboard. So you pull out a theme, you drag and drop the theme, and then you know, go to the widget library. So the widget library is categorized by you know, you, you, you know, utilization, RF related widgets, client related widgets, and security related. So I'm going to pull a few things from here. So I want to bring the top ten applications by usage, and uh, I also want to get a general usage of the network itself. And then I want to say, bring all the applications. It's a grid. So all applications by usage. And save this, just give it a name, and you're done. So you have a dashboard that's ready. Okay. Um, so we have, as you saw, there is a whole bunch of widgets that are categorized under that library. Um, so we are continuing to add more widgets to that. 
And uh, we'll also open up in terms of where the application can subscribe to the widget library that is available uh, over our cloud network, and they can download new widgets as and when it is available. Let me walk this dashboard through a scale setup. And Raj, how are we getting all of the applications? Uh, like, you know, can you talk to that a little bit? Sure. So the application, so, so we have uh, a DPI engine that is embedded onto all the access points. So pretty much every 11AC access point that we sell today has the DPI engine. Um, so we, we can detect up to, you know, 2,000 uh, plus signatures on the, at the access point itself. And so that feeds into Insight. So we get, you know, regular, you know, every 30 second update from the access point that are gathered on the Insight. Uh, so we get complete visibility into, you know, what is running on the network. And this is tracked down to a client level. So you know what applications are running on a client and uh, are, you know, you can roll it up. So that, that's what I was talking about earlier. So depending on the type of user, if I'm a CIO or if I'm part of the marketing, I'm interested in, you know, the application profile across all my distributed sites. And that would allow me to make some marketing decisions where I'm going to put my advertising money in terms of, you know, customers that are connecting on my network, right? So the the DPA engine is also integrated into the Wing platform. So it's not only the while Zebra Insight provides the visibility into it and trend and you know uh, analytics on top of the application usage. Uh, so Wing itself, uh, the DPI is tightly integrated with our fire, built-in firewall on the controller or on the access point, as well as the uh, the the cost policy. So you can enforce. Uh, you know, given an application, um, so it acts as yet another attribute by which you can enforce both firewall as well as, you know, your cost policies. So for, for a given enterprise, so if I know what my business critical applications are, and so I would like to prioritize, and then if, uh, you know, if there are applications that uh, I would like to drop, so you could use a firewall at the access point to drop that. And this again can be pushed, these policies can be pushed centrally from your, you know, from your radius using the policy attribute on that as well. So that's a pretty robust infrastructure. So while Zebra Insight provides the visualization, so it is tightly integrated uh, on the edge uh, with firewall and cause. I have a question. Is there a, a live gap it, of a live packet capture in it? Yes, I'm going, to, I'm going to walk you through right for that. Okay. Yes. Okay, so the dashboard interface is pretty f powerful. So you can, you know, we can build a new dashboard in minutes, and uh, and. <laughs> You can, you know, the, these are self-updating, and as you move down the, you know, hierarchy, you know, you would see this dash up, dashboard getting updated automatically. Okay. Let me walk you through the some of the troubleshooting aspects of it. On the tools, um, so we have the packet capture, uh, wireless debug log, and ping and trace route, and that is integrated on the browser. So you can do this. Let's try some. I'm going to search for this out of domain San Jose. Let's say I want to capture the wireless packets across all my access points. I can start that, or I can customize that also for a specific access point, what direction, and all that. Okay. What, what format are the, the packet captures in? Radio tap or prism or? Uh, who can answer that for me? It's PCAP. PCAP, yeah. So it's PCAP, but for the, the wireless headers, what format are those in? There's radio uh, tap, there's prism, there's... A I think the radio tap last... It's a TZSP, right? The, I think I don't right? So let me... So you have the packet capture, and uh, you can also...
the wireless debug log that provides you know wireless debug information. Uh, you can also run it from here, from this interface. And uh, both the packet capture and the debug log you can save to disk and export it. Okay. So one thing that happens is the this is a powerful feature in terms of you know once if you say you know capture all wireless packets. So what it does <coughs> is uh, it sends that message out to all the access points that are connected on that out of domain. Um, so we get uh, packet captures from every one of those access points, and there is. You know, so and then we embed this feed on top of it. You know, when it was captured, on what radio, and all those details are embedded onto it. Okay. Any questions on that? Okay. Um, so this all oh, the product also includes a reporting module uh, that provides you know a bunch of uh, canned reports that are uh, regularly used. And you also have the ability to, you know, customize them. And uh, you can you can customize them. You can name, you know, select a report template, and uh, pull one of these uh, report templates, and uh, give it a title. And you have the ability to schedule this. Once you schedule, you know, it, you know, you can choose a frequency at which it runs. And the report output is, you know, we, we, uh, the PDF output can be stored on the server or it can be directly emailed to an alias. Okay. Another quick uh, option is like, you know, when you are looking at th thousands of access points that you have to work with and clients, um, so you have the ability to, you know, quickly search by any of the attributes. For example, this room is called Cape Card. And I can just type the location Cape and then get the access point that is on that location and get to the <coughs> details of that. Okay. Uh, so you can search access points, clients, and uh, you know anything else, any other device on the network. And uh, if it is an offline client, you would still, you know, the corresponding uh, detail page would be launched and you can, you know, quickly get to this information. So one of the goals is, um, you know, the interface has to be responsive, exceptionally responsive in terms of, you know, how quickly we serve, you know, pull this information out. And anything that a user that is looking into uh, should be just a few clicks away. So that's some of the, you know, one of the design goals for the product. Okay. Um, so with that, uh, we can switch to you know what is behind uh, the applications. If there are questions, I'll answer that as well. Do you support this in like a uh, like a public cloud offering where I don't have LAN connectivity or, or even WAN connectivity to the to the platform? Like, can I put it in AWS? You can. So we have a VX image, uh, sorry, uh, virtual controller image, or it runs on any uh, ESXi or any other hypervisor, and and an uh, Amazon mission image is also available. So you can host this on a. Uh, my question is more around: Does it do like NAT survivability from those up to the reporting platform? Uh, so repeat that again. Uh, NAT survivability. So if I'm on a private network mm -hmm. and my AWS instance is in the cloud, and I don't have a tunnel to AWS. Can mm -hmm. I do it oh, just over the internet from behind yes. the net? Yeah, you can do that. Yeah, yeah I think that's like you know, just like any other um, HTTP traffic which you can because these tunnels are nothing. I'll walk you through, you know, how that works. So, from from the out of domain manager, the connectivity is REST or over SSL tunnels. Yeah. Okay. Right. So, talking about that RF domain manager uh, and and the connectivity back to the server, I think there was a question uh, you had asked about, like you know, air defense and uh, and this insight, like you know. So, as you can realize, uh, a lot of data is being fed, but it is being fed. 
uh, through the RF domain manager. The RF domain manager, which is acts as the controller for the site, the access point acting as the controller at the site, does a level of aggregation and an optimization yeah. uh, to conserve van utilization. That's also a design goal for, yes. for, for this program. I'll, I'll walk you through that, yes.